One of the questions I get asked here the most on this channel is how I get my sound, how I get that classic country tone. Now unfortunately the first step is just a lot of hours of practice. A lot of where that country tone and sound comes from is actually just how I'm picking and fretting the notes. But that aside, there is kind of a certain set of rules and guidelines we can follow to set up uh, an amp and a pedal board in a way that gives us a good country sound. For this video, I have a, a Fender Princeton and I have a Vox AC15. Uh, Fender style amps and Vox style amps are by far the most common amps that are used in this genre. There are certainly variations of these amps by boutique builders, um, but even those amps are all based off of just your classic Fender and Vox circuits. So for this video, we're gonna start with dialing in a Fender Princeton, uh, and then when that's done, we'll move on to the Vox and dial that in as well. So step one, we need a guitar. Any Telecaster style guitar will do. This is one from a, a local builder here in town, but it has that classic Tele sound that we want out of this bridge pickup. So I'll be using this for this video. The next thing we need is an amp to plug into. As it turns out, I have one that's uh, magically already set up in the room here. So the amp is turned on, but before we start dialing in settings on the amp, uh, I want to talk briefly about what pedals I'm going to use for this style of music. Uh, just to kind of have a baseline sound for the amp, I just set the volume at four. Bass and treble are both at five, so it's a pretty just neutral sound. <laughs> nothing special. Let's talk briefly about these uh, these pedals we're going to use. So the first pedal we're going to talk about is a delay pedal. Uh, a lot of times in the country genre you'll hear players use what we call a slap back delay which just means after the picked note there's a repeated note coming from the pedal uh, and there's just one repeat and it's happening very quickly after the initial note. So the desired effect is going to be something like this where you can hear if I pick that note, you can hear, I'm only picking once, but there's a, a pretty immediate repeat following right after. So how we get this sound uh, on, on, on any common delay pedal, there's gonna be three knobs. One, uh, the feedback is gonna adjust how many times that repeat happens, right? So on this pedal, if I turn the feedback all the way up, Now obviously we don't want that, we just want the one repeat, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna turn that feedback all the way down. Now we can adjust how quickly that repeat happens, uh, and that happens with what is normally the delay knob on these pedals. So same thing, if I turn this way up, and I, I pick a note, right, that delay's happening quite a bit after. So once again, we don't want that. Uh, so we're gonna turn it down so if I turn the delay all the way down, the, the repeat is probably gonna happen so quickly that your ear won't even be able to pick up the difference. And we don't want that either. We wanna be able to hear it so that, that that picked note and that repeated note are happening pretty close together. Uh, and I'll do it even a little faster than that. Kind of right in that, kind of that, right in that range. The last thing we have to think about is how loud that repeated note is. A lot of these pedals can go anywhere from the repeated notes volume being completely off to having that repeated note actually louder than the initial picked note. For country, um, I normally set, set it so that the, the repeated note is roughly 50 to 60% as loud as the actual picked note. So uh, kind of a good starting point is just make it half as loud uh, and then you can maybe work on bringing it up a tiny bit from there. But that's a pretty good starting point. We, like I said, we want to hear that repeated note. Uh, we want to hear it pretty quickly after. We only want to hear one of them and we want it to be around 50 to 60 percent as loud as the original note. So that's how you're gonna to wanna to set up your delay pedal. Normally in a signal chain, I will hit my compressor first. Uh, I'll have any overdrives that I want in between that and then the last thing I'll have coming from my pedal board is gonna be the, the delay pedal. So let's talk next about the compressor. Uh, I did the delay pedal first just because I think if there was only one pedal that you were gonna buy in order to play this genre, I would probably start with a delay pedal just because I think that the effect it has is a little bit more obvious. Um, as you can tell, you, you turn the pedal on, it's pretty apparent that now the note is being repeated, whereas before it wasn't. 
Compressors can kind of be a little uh, more subtle, so it takes a little bit more to develop your ear to hear exactly what a compressor is doing. So I have the compressor turned on, and like I said, if you're not uh, used to or comfortable working with compression or compressors, they can be kind of a subtle effect at first. If I'm being perfectly honest, when I first bought this compressor pedal, it was just because I was told, like, hey, you're playing country guitar, you better have a compressor pedal. And I'd turn it on and turn it off, and to me, it didn't sound any different. I didn't really know how to dial it in. I didn't know how the different controls worked. So hopefully this will help alleviate some of that for you guys uh, if you're just getting started working with compression. What a compressor pedal does overall is obviously it, it compresses the sound. What that means is it's taking the, the louder peaks of our signals, the, the louder moments in our playing, and it's bringing those down. And then it's also taking the quietest moments of our playing and, and bringing them up. So you can almost think about it like a, an equalizer for volume, right? It's taking your quietest moments bringing those up a little bit in volume and taking your loudest moments and bringing those a little bit, uh, making those a little bit quieter in volume so that everything sits more in like a, a, a balanced range. Certain people will kind of argue that compression can take away some of the feeling and the emotion from your playing. Like if you're trying to play really softly, if you're really trying to dig in and play loudly, it won't let the, the dynamic range be as free. Right, but in this style of playing, in this in this country style, a lot of times it's it's fast paced. Uh, there's a lot of dead notes, and it just kind of helps with this style to to bring out those those more subtle sounds and then bring them up to to volume. So it is certainly something I would consider adding to your effects chain. Like I said, I'll normally add this first. It's the first thing my guitar plugs into, uh, and then from there, like I said, I hit the the overdrive pedals, and then obviously hit delay last, and then go to the amp. So let's talk about just how we dial in a, a compressor. I'll show you what the knobs on this one are like and kind of what, what they do to the sound. So here I'm using the, the Keeley compressor. It's a great pedal. I, I just put tape over the light here so that it wouldn't uh, kind of throw the camera out of focus. Normally on compression pedals, there's gonna be three different knobs that come standard. This one has a fourth. It has this, this clipping pedal. Uh, and that's kind of just designed for hotter hotter pickups. You can kind of bring down or gate down that, that signal coming in. Uh, so that one I'm not too worried about for this, but the, the three most common controls you're gonna see on these are obviously the level, which is just affecting the overall volume of the pedal. Uh, this one it's called sustain, but this knob here is actually affecting the amount of compression the pedal is adding. And then attack is also important. Attack is gonna be how quickly the pedal actually starts compressing that signal. So like I talked about, if you have a, a super loud peak in the volume uh, and you have your attack set all the way uh, all the way up, or in this case, it's gonna be super slow to actually engage, you're gonna hear that loud signal at first before it's compressed. So in, once again, in, in, the, in the country setting, we, we want that to happen pretty quickly. So I'm gonna turn the attack uh, all the way, I'm gonna roll it all the way left, which means it's, it's starting to work on this signal immediately after it uh, hits this pedal. And then the amount of compression, we don't need it to be overboard just by turning this pedal on, even, even rolling the compression all the way down, I can still kind of hear it in this sound. And then the level is just going to be, obviously, like I said, the, the actual output level as it, as it sends the signal on down the path. So this is what it sounds like without the compressor on. And then with it engaged. Normally I'm setting that volume level on the compressor so that when I turn the pedal on, when I turn the pedal off, I'm not hearing a change in volume from the amp, right? I don't want it to be that when the compressor's engaged, it's suddenly sending a way hotter signal down the line. So I'll kind of adjust the amount of compression that I think I want, and then I'll, I'll mess with the volume control uh, and as I'm turning the pedal on and off, and that way I can kind of get a sense for making sure that the actual volumes are matched. One thing I just quickly want to mention, uh, obviously I have some overdrive, some distortion pedals on this board. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to be engaging them 
whether or not you use overdrive or distortion is kind of just going to depend on the sound you want. If you're playing a more modern style country, a little bit more rock influences in it, then absolutely you're going to want some more overdriven signal. For the sake of this video, I'm thinking in my the, the sound I'm going for is more of that classic clean country tone. Uh, if there is going to be any sort of breakup, it's probably going to come from the amp. So I'm leaving them off for this video, but obviously you can you can dial in overdrive to your liking uh, in any part of this process. So now let's kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this. Uh, obviously I got this Princeton plugged in behind me, got it mic'd up. Uh, I'm just kind of splitting the, the signal between a SM57 and a Sennheiser E906. So the, the, the signal that you're going to be hearing in this video is basically just a 50-50 split of, of those two mics. Um, like I said before, I have the volume on this set at 4 and treble and bass are both at 5. There is a onboard reverb here that I have kind of set between one and two. Uh, you don't want super wet reverb. Um, depending on the style, you might want to turn it up a little bit. With these Fender amps, that onboard reverb can, can kick in pretty quickly. So normally I'll have it kind of anywhere between one and a half and three. And then this amp does have the, uh, the tremolo as well, but that's, those are both just rolled completely off. So this is what it sounds like, just kind of those middle of the road settings. The delay and compressor are both on right now. sounds pretty good which is kind of a testament to these these fender amps you just set them kind of middle of the road and you're normally going to pretty get a pretty good sound out of them i am just going to tweak this one a little bit and with this amp i can kind of cheat just because I've, I've gigged this thing i've done hundreds of gigs with this amp so i i know just right out of the gate exactly how i would want to set this up to get a, a good country sound right but if i'm backlining a fender amp at a festival or, or some venue where there's there's backline amps provided Obviously Fender amps are all going to be similar, but they're all going to be different as well, right? So this is kind of how I would do that process. I would set everything, uh, I'd get the volume kind of where I want it, and then set the, the tone controls kind of right in the middle, and then just tweak them a little, little bit uh, from there. So another thing is I will normally uh, dial in an amp without the compressor on, and then engage the compressor, and then uh, go back and make any final adjustments I need as well. And that way throughout a set, or if I'm, I'm using this for different things, that, that way I also have a tone that I like when the compressor isn't engaged. So for this amp, just because I know it, I am going to turn up the, the bass a little bit. Um, this, the, the pickups in this telly are pretty bright. So I actually am going to roll down the, uh, the treble to about four. And then just to drive this, to push this amp a little bit more, I'm going to roll the volume up to almost five. And let's see how this sounds. Let me make sure I'm not going to clip here. So this is what it sounds like with those new settings. sounds pretty good depending on the, uh, the the guitar you have and the pickups you have you might tweak it a little bit but as far as like a clean classic country sound I think this Fender kind of knocks it out of the park. One thing to note on these Fender style amps a lot of them have two different inputs and they're not they're not two channel amps both of these inputs are going into the same channel um, but the, the second input on these normally gives you a little bit of a, a decibel cut so just because we're in this small room, I'm plugging into channel two. If I was gigging with this amp uh, live on stage, I would absolutely be in, uh, be in the first input. But just for the sake of this video, I just I'm recording in a small room. I can get plenty of volume out of uh, this second input that's just a little bit quieter. So hopefully if you have a Fender amp, that kind of gave you some insight into how to set the thing up. Now let's plug in this Vox AC15 and see if we can't get some, uh, some country sounds out of that thing. So I got this Vox all hooked up. Um, just a couple things to kind of go over before we really get into this. This is probably made the most famous by Brad Paisley. He's well known for playing Dr. Z amps. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is almost every single one of his hit recordings was recorded on uh, a, an old vintage Vox AC30 that he has. 
he tours with the the Dr. Zams just because they're a little bit more road worthy. They're uh, they're newer and uh, easier to work on and all that. But most of the sounds he got in the studio were done on Vox amps, and a lot of the Dr. Z amps that he gigs with uh, are based off of circuits either in old Fenders or in old Vox amps. So in, in the case of this one, it's a Vox AC15, fairly similar to the Vox AC30, obviously not nearly as powerful, but they both have two channels in this case. Uh, there's a, a normal channel and a, a top boost channel. So out of the gate initially, I have the, the bass and treble for the top boost channel just set kind of right, right in the center, right at noon. Tone cut's also gonna be set right at noon. The nice thing about the, the top boost channel is it gives us more of the EQ controls than just the normal channel. If we were just doing the normal channel, we just have basically a channel volume and then the, the master channel here. Whereas with this top boost, it gives us some, some bass and treble controls as well. So with these amps, uh, the, there's two kind of volume stages. We have a, a channel volume, which is this knob, which will adjust the, the preamp and then our master volume, which will adjust the actual amount that the, the power amp is pushing. So if you're not familiar with how these amps work, or if you're used to, to Fender style amps and are new to Vox amps, that, that two separate volume controls allows us to dial in quite a wide range of tones. So one of the nice thing about these master volume amps is we can dial up the volume in the, in the preamp section and leave the master volume down and get quite a bit of overdrive from the, the circuits. Um, so if I crank the, the top boost channel volume all the way up and then leave the master volume kind of right around nine o'clock, I get some pretty overdriven sounds like this. But obviously that's not what we're looking for to, to get a, a country tone, right? So I'm gonna start with the, uh, the top boost channel volume kind of right around noon. So it's, it's just straight up and down. And then I'm gonna leave that master volume, uh, just turned up a little bit, it's around nine o'clock right now. And let's see how this sounds. So that's a, a pretty decent start. Um, we have quite a bit of options as far as, as shaping the tone here. We have our, our tone cut in the actual power amp section, and then we can also adjust the, the treble in our, our preamp section, right? So tone cut is, is kind of, if you think about it, a little backwards in the sense that as we, as we turn it up to the right, it's actually cutting more of the high end. So if our sound is too bright, we can, uh, we can actually turn that up and that will cut some of that treble. Obviously, like, like I said before, this, this pickup, or these, this Telecaster has pretty bright pickups, right? So I'm gonna roll a little bit of that high end off. I'm gonna turn the tone cut, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit more, and then I'll bring the, the treble down in our actual preamp, in our top boost section. Just from how it sounds to me, I do, I want to hear a little bit more low end. So I'm going to turn the bass up uh, to about, it's kind of right at like two o'clock now. And to me, that's a pretty good launching point, starting off point. Uh, the, the delay is on right now, but I have not turned the compressor on. So I'm going to turn that on and then, uh, play through it a bit and uh, see how it sounds from there. So here's the Vox AC15 with the compressor engaged. After that you kind of have some insight into how I go about achieving country tone out of these styles of amps. Like I said, fenders and boxes are going to kind of be your bread and butter in this genre. Obviously with, with tone, it's such a, a giant topic. There's thousands of different opinions, thousands of different ways to, to do it and still achieve good results. So this is just kind of the, the method that I used. Um, 
like I said, with these amps, you're pretty safe kind of setting everything right in the center, uh, right at noon, and then tweaking the, the bass and treble cuts um, from there kind of as you need to, depending on what pickups you're using and what the, the amp is doing. So hopefully this is a good kind of starting point for you guys. You can kind of see what, what pedals and what amp settings I'm going with. Um, like I said, this is a very uh, broad subject. So if you have any questions or any comments about things you do differently or about things that I'm doing, make sure and leave those in the, in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can use this as kind of a springboard to start getting the, the country sounds that you want to hear out of your, your gear at home. That's all I got for now. Take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.